Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Decryption and I hope you are well. So a while ago we made these spline points here for visualizers that you can only see in the engine where it shows green if you can go one way and red if you can go another. And whilst these are okay, it gets messy quite easily if you've not rotated it properly. And if you've only got one of them going one direction, so if I come and delete off this one here, it just deletes the red arrow. And Whilst we know what it is, if you give it to an artist or a new employee, they're going to look at it and go, I don't know what this means. Is green that direction? Is green that direction? So what I showed off in a couple of videos ago was this new visualizer that I've been working on, which seems to be a lot better, both performance wise and usability. And it's still engine only, as you can see, but you can see clearly just by looking at which direction the AI will go. So with these double arrows here, you can go either way. So this is a standard pavement route kind of thing. The red arrows only go in a single direction. Another benefit of this new way is when you click and drag the old ones around, it only moves half of it you have to come and find the spline point and click compile to force it to update itself whereas with this new one when you move ones which are connected it will update in real time and if you move ones which don't have any connection like this previous one this node here has no idea this node's connected to it there's no need for it to it moves but we've got this new button where we can tell it to just force update it how cool is that so in today's tutorial we're gonna look at making this let's get started So realistically, there is quite a few changes we're going to be doing to this, but there's plenty for us to learn whilst we're going to it, and also some freebies. You can see if I come into my UI state trees folder, I have a bunch of these different things. So all we basically have is this black arrow here, and then we also have a double direction arrow. Feel free to customize these however you want. I've put a link in the description so you can go and download these. And then all I've done is I've created a material from this here where we take the image and we plug the alpha into the opacity mask and the RGB into the base color. And then we've added an emissive color to it. You don't have to add this if you don't want to. I wanted to. I've set these as parameters so you can customize it. And then on per material instance of each one of these for the singular, for example, I've made it orange and I've overwritten the color. It doesn't look so good there but in the world when it's flat you will see it so if I like show this as a plane instead there, look, there you go so you can set the colors to whatever you want you can you know do whatever you want with it really I'll put all the downloads in the description all of that so you've got it all preset up just make sure it's in UI state trees and if you don't want it in there then move it or just download the textures either way so where to begin on this one the first thing we're gonna do because we already have the cubes in place and the cubes don't change they are what they are because they just work really nicely for you to be able to click on and move it around. The text I've added just to this one, so we don't need to worry about that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and delete the arrow because we don't need to worry about rotation with this new method. It just works by itself. But what we do need to go and add, a new type of component called an instant static mesh. So if we search for instant static mesh here, we'll just name this single direction arrow. And all this is, is a clever way Unreal built in where you can assign it a single static mesh. And instead of creating a draw call for every single static mesh, it will combine it all into essentially one mesh. So it will only ever cost one draw call. So even though we're rendering a bunch of these different planes, it will treat it as one large actor, which is very good. So we'll come and set this static mesh here to just an ordinary plane. Technically you could set it to whatever you want like a cube. I've got no idea what it'll look like if you do but the option's there. And then if you click off it and click back on it, I don't know why you have to do that. Now we can come and select the single control point arrow and that will be that mesh set up. And then all we do in code is say to it add another instance and go to this position. If you have got meshes like that like at one end of your world all the way to the other end of the world a different one and they're not connected don't use static mesh instances. They're for close range things like this patrol point here. If the patrol point gets so large it's covering multiple cities, I might break it down into smaller patrol point chunks. But yeah, and then we'll come and duplicate this with Control or Command D, and we'll just call it both direction arrow. And this one will cover the both multiple ways one. There we go. And now we can compile and save. Now that we've got that set up, we can now move on to the actual coding part because at the moment we need to basically remove all this code that renders the splines. We're still keeping the splines. You can see 
the lines are still there, but we're going to make it invisible and instead we're going to use the static mesh instance generation part. So I'm going to come into my construction script here. And you can see we have most of the code here, but what we're going to do is actually come and basically wipe it all out because we don't need it anymore. Instead on here, we're simply going to come and call the draw splines function directly like so. And then we can actually come in and delete all of the inputs. We don't need those either. So we'll just delete all those off. So if you're following this from scratch, as in you've not got the previous one, then just create a function called draw spline. That's the first step. Then I'm going to come into it. And then this is where we start heavily modifying this function. So the first thing we're going to do, which is a fix from the previous one, so I'll just move this up here, is each time we create a spline component, but we never really get rid of it. Now, I don't know if you have to get rid of it, but it can't hurt us doing it anyway to check. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click here and do get components by class and because we add the spline component I'm going to search for the spline component and pick that one and then I'm going to loop over all of this and I'm simply going to call destroy component on it so if we do seem to have hidden spline components everywhere it's not going to matter and the reason we have to say hidden is I've clicked on this cube you can clearly see it's got two splines associated with it but there's nothing in here at all it's hidden away it's like editor only so we're going to come and we're going to destroy it off so just in case it starts to lag starts to add loads of swine components this is going to clear itself up which is quite nice so let's give a comment of destroy old spline component there we go that's the first section the second section we have to do is because we're adding instances to both of these we need to tell it to clear it up of all old static meshes inside it so this is simply done by dragging both down at the same time like so then we'll drag off of it and simply call clear instances and we'll just plug both into the target, which is a nice little blueprint thing you can do to tell it to clear both at the same time. So we'll highlight this and just say clear or old instances. There we go. It's a little bit more optimized, which is nice. Next, we need to only loop over the next point directly like that. So we've got a list of next points, which shows us which splines we are going to next. So that would be the green way, because the previous ones will be handled an, a different way later on in the loop. So we can connect this for each loop up to this clear instances up here. And we'll just neaten it up a little bit like so. So we're going to loop over it and then we are going to continue creating the spline component. That's all normal. However, we no longer need to set the unselected spline color so we can drag that off. And I'm going to move this attached component down to the side here. And then instead of connecting this current spline across to here, what I'm actually going to do is drag off this and do set visibility. And I'm going to connect it up like so and make sure they're both unticked. So we can't see it because we don't need to see it. And then back over here, I've got a local variable of current spline. So I just connect that up to there like so. So the next part is we need to set the spline start position. So before we were doing all this funky stuff to move it to the side and everything, we don't need any of that anymore. So we can just delete it off. All we simply need to do is get our cube, which is our starting position. So this green bit here. And then all we need to do is, is do get world location and just plug it in. So much simpler than what we were doing before. So we can connect this back up over here and we can move it across and we'll just wrap it in a comment, set splines, start location. And then this is gonna be absolutely mind blowing as well. All of this to set the old end point, we no longer need any of it anymore. We just need the set location at spline point. And then this time, all we're going to do is drag in current point, which is the current next point we're looking at. And then we're going to get that cube. So just scroll all the way down to the bottom. You'll see the blue one. And then from here, exact same thing, get world location. And we'll plug it in. So as you can see, so far, that is much, much, much cleaner. And it's going to sort the splines out nicely. Set splines end location. So, so far, we've massively cleared up the entire thing. But there's a little bit more we have to do now where we actually have to start telling it to generate the instances on these static meshes so you see if we compile and save now we get nothing the splines are invisible unless you click it but you can see they're only showing the next direction which is exactly what we want so the next bit we need to do here we need to actually decide what mesh we need to render from point a to point b so in this case here this has a next point of this point over here so it's going from the right side to the left side so in that case we will generate the arrows facing forwards however this next point also has a previous point coming back to it meaning they can traverse both ways so then in that case we need to change it and show the double arrows and it sounds complicated but it's actually super simple to do so all we're going to do is create a local variable called selected direction arrow and i'm going to set this to a type of instant static 
mesh component that one right there so that's literally going to be that one or that one we're going to tell it to pick and i'm going to come in i'm going to set this directly on here like so and then from here i'm going to drag off and i'm going to go backwards and i'm going to type select like so so we can say based on this index select either this one or that one so how do we decide which one we want to select so i'm going to drag our current pointer and i'm going to get that one's previous points and then i'm going to check if it contains and all we need to do is add cell just like so so all that's going to do is basically say I'm on this point connect to my next point which is that one and see if that's previous points contains me which it does so it'll choose a true which will be our both directional arrow if it's false it means it doesn't come back on itself meaning it's a one-way direction so we pick the single direction arrow instead. So we'll add a comment around this, set the direction arrow. And then this is where we start doing the logic to actually render the instances. So we now know which one we're rendering to. What do we do? So we're going to get the current spline, which is what we created at the start. And then we're going to get the length of it. So this will get us the actual distance of the spline from point A all the way to the final point. Then here's our first magic number, I'm going to call it. We're going to set this division to 200. And the reason we're doing this is based on Unreal's default plane here. When you drag this out into the world, it just says the scale is one by one by one, right? However, in Unreal's distance unit, so the distance between this side and this side or that side and that side is 200. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this location and we're going to render one of these. We're going to add 200 onto it and then do the next one and do the next one. A good way of looking at this is if I put this on the floor, you can see these grids line up absolutely perfectly. So the way you can figure this out is if this is there and you duplicate this and move it to the next grid, it will roughly equate to 200 in the distance there. And that's how I managed to figure it out so we can build it up nicely. So that's the magic number. If you change your default static mesh, you may have to play with that number. For me, that's fine. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna floor it. What this means is when we take the division of this, it may not always be a whole number. Say if it's a thousand, then we divide it by 200, we'll get five. So it'll loop over five times and generate five of them. If we get a thousand and one, length then that won't divide properly so this floor will basically just it'll just round it down that's basically what it'll do and then from here we can actually drag off this and add a for loop not a for each loop a for loop if you've never used a for loop before it's a typical programming thing instead of looping over something you're looping over a number that's it so it is essentially a for each loop but for numbers and we're just going to connect the floor to the last index and we'll set this first index to one so the reason we're doing this is the first index at zero will be bang on this cube right here well i don't want it there because it'll look messy through the cube so i always add one on which will be one 200 unit so it'll be about here and then it'll start rendering it it'll almost create a little grid around the cube so you can always see the cubes so we'll wrap this in a comment just saying set up instance loop from mesh length and then we can come across so now we've got the length of the spline and we know how many segments to break it up into so we can generate meshes we actually need to be able to move those meshes into position so what we can do is we can just get the current spline and we can drag off and say get location at distance along spline like so and we can plug in the distance and we can tell it to work like that but we have to do this twice like so one for the location handling and one for the rotation handling where we change what happens so what i'm going to do instead just to make this a little bit neater and it clears up some of our code for us i'm going to come and create another function here called get location at index so inside here i'm going to add three imports to this location the first one we will call current spline and this will simply be a spline component and we will pass that in from the previous one so we know which spline to work with the next one will be the index and this is going to be the for loops index there so it'll tell us which segment we are working on and we will set that to an integer and the final one will be our spacing this will be another magic number that you can work with but this will basically be the distance between both both splines that we're trying to do which will make more sense shortly so from here from the current spline we'll do the get location at distance again and then we're going to grab at the index and we're going to multiply it by the spacing like so and then we can plug this into the distance and then from here we can now return a vector which we will call mesh location and we'll set it to a type of vector like so and we'll plug it in so this is just a really quick function that we can now reuse where we're going to get the current spline find the index that we're on so segment one two three four 
multiply it by the spacing, so 4 times 60, and then we'll be able to get that from the spline. So if you've got a spline of a 1,000, we can easily work out how often we need to add a mesh. So back in our draw splines here, now to make it much easier, we can drag our function in like so, and you'll notice it wants us to pin up the exit. So what I will actually do is just come and tick pure like so, and it means we can just plug data into it and work from it just like that. So from current spline, I will just add current spline. From the index, I will add the index. And the spacing is the magic number. I will set it to 60. You can play with these numbers. It took me ages to work out these numbers. And I think there's only two magic numbers. I'll duplicate this down here, but we are going to change it now. So the distance is actually going to be index. So I'll duplicate this down here. And the index is actually going to be the current index plus one and I'll plug it in and that just means we can set the rotation properly so as the splines are going it will rotate to face the, the end destination this isn't going to generate you rounded corners because we're not doing a road generator just a basic patrol point generator but it will make sure it's rotating in the right position and then all we do is take our selected directional arrow we drag off and we simply type add instance so we're adding an instance to this you can't add different meshes into this. You are adding this mesh with this material, but that's why it can optimize it so well. Granted, the optimizations are in the engine only, but if you're working on a giant open world game, imagine Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, your artists are going to thank you if the system doesn't lag every time you add a patrol. So we'll split this transform here. The location will be the mess location, just like that. Then, in order to make it face the right direction, I'm going to take this rotational one we've done for the next one, and I'm going to minus from it, and I'm going to connect the current location of it. So we're taking out the destination vector away from the current vector, and then from this, we're going to make rot from X, like so. And we can plug that into rotation. I won't lie. I don't know what that fully does. It seems to be able to rotate it based on the x-axis only. It works, I don't know why. And then the only other thing I've done on mine is I've made the planes bigger by setting the scale to 2. And that's mainly because, oh, it's kind of working, we need to sort something out. That's mainly because if we add a plane in, it's the size of one of these. I wanted mine to be bigger, so I set it to a generic size of 2. If you set it higher than 2, if you want bigger planes, you may need to modify these magic numbers of the 60 and the 200 there. The 200 one will be more important than the 60, I think. And we're nearly there, ladies and gentlemen. So the only other thing we're going to do now is we're going to come back into the construction script. And in order to fix it, so when you change one, it changes anything connected to it. They're going to drag the previous points in, drag off of this and add a standard for each loop. And then from here, we're simply just going to call the draw splines function that we've created. And then I'm going to copy this and paste it just below itself like so. And add it in on the completed and then I'll add in the next points like so. So you might be wondering why we're not telling the previous points to go to this one and make this one go to its own previous points and keep going down the chain and the reason we're not doing that is it's going to cause a glitch. If you tell this one to update the next point so it updates that one and then you tell that one to update its next point so you go that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. It'll come back to this one and then go well I need to update my next points and it'll do it again and again and again and you'll get a circular reference error that's what it's called because you're doing a circular reference and it'll crash your editor so we don't want to do that you could build it in if you really wanted to where you say if you reach this one again stop doing it but it's going to get tricky to start managing that so a much easier way which is something i showed in the editor is we will simply come and create a new function called update all splines where we simply just for editor sake only get all actors of class and we will just get our bp patrol point and then we will loop over all of this with a for each loop and then we simply call draw splines like so and we will make sure that we tick this function as call an editor so we can actually call it and just make sure one catch you need to look out for make sure these for each loops where you recall draw splines are in the construction script not inside draw splines otherwise when you click update all splines you'll have the same effect where it'll call draw splines call the for each loops call draw splines call for each loop so it works nicely the last thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to come and select both of these because you saw the flickering and i'm basically just going to move it up to the same z axis so 104 is the cube like so and now if we compile and save
ladies and gentlemen, I think we are nearly done. So you can see there's some shadows. You may want to keep the shadows. I am not bothered about the shadows, so I'm going to come back to the patrol point, and I'm going to search for collision, and just turn off all collision, so no collision. I'll turn off can character step upon and generate overlap event. I will also come and type hidden in game and I'll make sure that's ticked and I will also search for shadows. I will turn off any form of shadows because we don't need it. We don't even need receive shadows and um, if we compile and save you can see now we have a good patrol point. If we press G you can see they hide away so it means it's perfectly working. We are good. So let's try it. So if I grab this patrol point here and move it you can see it updates dynamically on the fly like that which is great. We can come and move any of them and it will move the patrol points into position. How cool is that ladies and gentlemen? A proper patrol point system. Let's add a next point. So we do actually still have our dev tools. Uh, where are you? Which we created in a previous example for the patrol points. So let's run that. This should all still work. That's how cool it is. So if I come and click this one and click add next patrol point, we can drag it out and you can see it will instantly update itself. How cool is that? That is so cool, isn't it? So just to test the previous ones, I don't want this one to be able to walk back that way. We'll just come and delete the previous points off. You can see it's messed up because we deleted it. So if we just click update all splines, it now becomes a single direction arrow like so. So the reason it's feeling like that is because this patrol point is being told the next one is this one. And this patrol point has no idea these arrows exist because it doesn't need to. The AI never needs to go up that way. We could also reverse this around. So if I come and click this one, delete this next point off, and then click this one, and then add a next point, which goes back to this one. Boom, there you go. So now we've got a next arrow where the NPC, maybe there's a house. There's a house right here. The NPC can come in, walk down here, join this patrol, and walk on down there, like so. Our new patrol point visualization system. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen? It is so nice. It works really, really well, and you can customize it however you want. If you want to remove the emission, simply go into the UI state trees material instance, and you can change the emission right there to change it to whatever you want, more, less. You can move it up, down, hide the cubes, show the cubes. It's really, really easy to customize, and it's so quick. That's the coolest thing. You can technically stretch these. So like if I stretch these sideways, you can see it will stretch out if you want longer ones. If you start to stretch it the distance of the spline, it will mess up. But that's where that magic 200 number comes in. So say if I wanted them to be much bigger, if I come to splines here, you can change that number to say 400. And at the moment, it'll leave gaps, but it'll give you the space that you can stretch it out and do whatever you need. But really, just keep it as it is. That You just need to set it in the code so it's right for most instances. If your patrol points are ever longer, just simply move them longer away. If they need to be wider, so maybe you've got a long road, that one's okay to stretch it out make it do whatever you want maybe you want to add different icons depending on the type of path that could be another way but yes there we go ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching i hope this helped if you've got any other improvements please let me know remember the links are in the description if you do want them thank you for watching my name is decryption and i will see you next time